Hey guys, today I'm talking to you about a way that I really separate myself from competitors, right? I am in a field of tutoring, uh, which is still under the hub of education. Um, and there are a lot of people, um, whether they've been certified teachers or maybe they just started tutoring from college or they found something that they were really good at, whether it was like test or whatever. And so a lot of people are going inside of tutoring because a lot of families, a lot of children need outside assistance. And so one of the ways that I like to separate myself from local and even national competition is I make sure that every learner gets a customized, personalized experience. One of the things that was super great about teaching during the pandemic is it really helped me to grow in the area of virtual teaching. So this has really allowed me to not just be a local tutor, but to teach students from all over the country. Um, I am super excited to share that I actually teach in four states. I teach in Maryland, Georgia, Alabama, and Arizona. I have students in those four states. And so when I was teaching during the pandemic, one of the things that I really had to wrap my mind around was how do I keep students engaged during virtual learning? How do I continue to give quality instruction during virtual learning? So I can credit 2020 for something and my students now benefit from all of the experimenting, all the extra hours of studying and watching different videos um, to make me who I am as a teacher. So I wanted to talk a little bit about how you can separate yourself from competitors just in case you are interested in stepping out full time or maybe even part time into being your own independent ed educator, being your own boss in this field of tutoring. So. One thing that I definitely do to make sure that I meet the needs of my students is I always give a pre-assessment or just a baseline assessment. I personally have um, a great tool that I use and I'll list some of my tools in the um, bar below and I assess them right out of the gate. Parents will a lot of times give you what they believe they know about their children as learners um, during the school year i will send a survey to teachers like you know from the data that you've collected from what you've seen in the classroom what do you see what do you know about this student given that things have been so hectic i've kind of weighed away from that because i know that teachers have a lot on their plates but traditionally or in the past i have sent like a survey to to um, parents and say, hey, can you ask your child's teacher to fill this out for me with their reading level or any benchmark assessment, just to give me like a gauge. But I've went a step farther and I have created my own um, assessments that I give in our first two lessons. So um, typically on the first day of me meeting them, we'll talk a little bit. I'll try to get to know them, fill their personalities out and get them comfortable with talking to me. And then after I do that, we'll usually do a reading assessment. I try to do that first because a lot of times, number one, I enjoy reading, but then I just, it gives me a little bit more prep time with reading. Um, and then also, let's say I prepped for one level and then I might need to assess them again because they might have done really well independently on a certain level that I kind of predicted they would do. Um, because it's all about flexibility and again it's all about meeting the student exactly where they are and then the second time we meet I do a math assessment I don't like to test them for long periods the assessment usually takes between 30 and 40 minutes and then I use the last 10 to 15 minutes of that tutoring session to talk directly to the parent and express what I have observed what how the student performed on my benchmark and then what I am going to um, focus on in our time together for the next 12 weeks. The second thing that I like to do is using that information, I then go and find resources, physical resources that I can put together and give to my learners. And I think this is one of the ways that I connect the most to my students. I often get, you know, make them feel special. Children love to receive mail. It makes them feel like adults. <laughs> I can I can attest to this. I have a first grader and a kindergartner or I guess I have a second grader and a first grader now. 
um, and they love when there is mail for them. And so one of the ways that I get students excited about my program and working with me and learning with me is I send them things. And so um, initially when people register with me, I have a registration fee and I use that registration fee to not only like give them access to digital materials, um, different websites like they can go on and play games and do um, active worksheets or active um, activities of a sort that follow along what we'll be working on week by week. But I also put together some hands-on resources that the student can do independently and that the parent can also um, do with their learner as well. They have virtual access to virtual activities, but then this is a way that if mom is like, no more computer today, no more tablet today, the student can pull out this notebook and they can begin to work on activities that match what we've been working on in class. Another thing that I really make sure that I do, um, and I guess this comes from my time in the classroom, so I guess this is like tip three, is I practice open communication with my parents. Number one, I always express to them that this is a partnership. In order for them to get maximum growth, we have to work together. We have to be a team. If I express to you that I really want your learner to log on and complete something that I put into their virtual assignment box, please let them go and do that assignment because I need that to help me um, customize maybe something that's going to happen the following week or after. And so we are a team that parent knows I am there to support them and their learner. And so I also send weekly emails that just express um, what we did this week, how their learner did. I always praise my learners as I am teaching. And I know a lot of people, they may do this with other tutoring sites and other you know tutoring gigs, but you always want to be noting as you're tutoring, you know, getting feet, writing down things that you're noticing, you know, are they using their hands when it comes to certain math, they can do it fluently without any manipulatives or, um, you know, just always collecting data. And so what I do um, before the end of the week, I typically connect, connect with my parents on Friday because I tutor Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. And so Friday morning, I usually wake up and using my notes, I send um, personalized emails. No email is the same. I send them to my parents just saying, hey, this is a fake person. Rebecca did wonderful during our sessions. I love the effort that she's putting in each time we meet. Um, I have put blah, blah, blah in her assignment box. We're going to continue to work on this strategy. We're going to continue to work on this content or whatever have you. And then I just seal it with, um, thank you for allowing me to help your learner reach each step because my business is called Step and Stone. So I try to tie that in in little clever ways. But I just always let them know where their money is going, right? If you're paying somebody and you have to say, why am I paying you? I can tell you right then, they're going to stop. So you just want to make sure that they know that you value them, that you're really committed to the growth of their learners, what they can do to assist you and what you are doing to assist their learners. So that's very, very important. And then the last thing that I will say in regards to tutoring is just make sure that you are really paying attention to your learner as you're working with them. So since I have a lot of primary students, I know that they are very itchy, giddy, they like to move, they like to stand, almost as if they were in the classroom. So what I like to do is we have a time, sometimes we'll start with um, a game that could, that's like a warm up, and then we do a little bit more just me and them, whether it's me holding up cards or I write out problems and we solve or we go into the meat of what we're doing, then we have game time. And I'm always very energetic, always. Like my parents will tell you, wow, you are very excited to teach addition. You are very excited to talk about figurative language. You're very excited to see my child. And why wouldn't I be, right? Like I love what I do and when you can wake up and do what you love, you are incredibly blessed. So I always have a positive energy because that vibe, even though they may be in Arizona and you're in Georgia, it is reciprocated. So if I'm like, Ugh, okay, question one or read the first sentence, no, we don't do any of that. Like it's just very high energy and just 
really getting them moving and learning and just getting them pumped up and excited about what they're doing because a lot of times when they can't do something that you ask them to do like if i put up a word and they don't know their confidence is kind of hit a little bit so you gotta be like wait you know just positive reinforcement so that is what i would say you know these are things that i know have worked and so even when people ask me i had somebody ask me the other day like how is it that you are attracting new clients and of course marketing always um helps i market on facebook instagram and even youtube has become a way that parents are finding me and educators are finding me and like wait i need to tell a, a child that i teach about you because they, they need your help so youtube has even brought in an audience of uh, clients for me but the biggest way to get clients is to honor and 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 teach your butt off with the ones you have so like for example i had a parent this previous week say hey we're loving what you're doing with my son i told my sister i told my so-and-so and they're gonna call you to work with my nephew or to work with my niece and so word of mouth is even more powerful because think about it like when you see a promotional that i put on instagram it's going to be cute it's going to be attractive it's going to gain your attention but at the end of the day it's still like who are you and can you really do what you're saying you can do versus if your your uh, co-worker or family friend or your sister or brother is like look she is really helping my child you have to put her put your child in her program and so that is what's making the difference for me so i hope that these four tips that i have shared with you um help you to maybe step out into entrepreneurship or edupreneurship and become that tutor that you desire to be whether that's part-time or full-time it's all about what you make it okay life is all about what you make this journey so if you have any specific questions because i plan to do a, um, a few more tutoring uh, videos like just showing you how i set up my space and organize my space what type of tools and resources i use during my lessons what do i use to plan and i even have almost like a tutor planner you know how you had teacher planners yeah I had to go ahead and make a tutor planner just to help me be you know organized and as targeted as possible for my learners so again if you have any questions or there's anything in particular you'd like to see on my channel go ahead and put that in the comment section below if you have not already i don't know what you're waiting for but go ahead and subscribe i would love for you to connect to step with monet and let's continue to step in the right direction in education and then lastly if you don't follow me on instagram that is where you get things quicker, right? Like, I know I try my best to post here on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but I definitely put promotionals. I go live on Wednesdays with other teachers around the, the um, country. Like, there's a lot of meat there as well. So again, if you don't follow me on Instagram, you need to go ahead and do that. And guys, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being a part of my community. And I hope that everything that I am sharing with you all is an asset like it is enriching you and making you better and encouraging you because that is what it's all about so i look forward to reading your comments below and talking with you guys and i will see you in the next video bye